Hi friends, welcome to this brief video where we talk about how to implement a RAG solution utilizing Azure SQL Database and your very own data. My name is John Morehouse. I'm gonna be your tour guide for today. Uh, my contact information is on the slide before you. Feel free to reach out to me in any of those meetings you desire. Uh, I'm heavily involved in the data community. I love talking about data, especially around SQL Server. So let's go ahead and jump in there. What is RAG? So RAG actually stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And what that really means is that it's a combination of both retrieval and generative AI model. Uh, in today's world with OpenAI, ChatGTP, uh, OpenAI in itself and lang different language models and utilizing that uh, solution to discover information about your data is pretty, pretty important in today's world. A lot of organizations are looking for different ways to utilize their own data to better service their consumers, as well as to get information about their data. So two things that we need to think about when we talk about a RAG solution is one, embeddings. And embeddings is really the process of taking a data element, which could be a text string or a picture, um, and translating that into a mathematical representation. That mathematical representation is called a vector. And the vector is really a very big list of floating point numbers. Those numbers, the computer can interpret and translate those numbers into basically what is conceptually like a 3D map. So we can compare those numbers to other embeddings and vectors of other data and see how similar they are. And that's how the computer can generate answers when you ask it questions. So embeddings and vectors are important when we talk about a RAG solution. This is a really good representation that I found online. Uh, the, the reference link is above the image. Embeddings and vectors, essentially we take this string, the foundation series by As Asmanov, and we translate it into the vector, which is there on the right-hand side. You can see it's a list of floating point numbers separated by a column. And typically, um, this was all done with uh, string data types, uh, because there was no effective way to store that information, uh, individual uh, uh, data type within a database. So oftentimes we would store this as a string and then the computer would read it and we'd have to translate it into a vector um, so that they can do the comparison for the AI. Um, here's a, a really brief representation. I was really curious uh, how I could do this programmatically. And so in this quick demo, um, I actually used ChatGTP to generate the PowerShell for me. I just had to supply the API key and the API base. Um, I do have a OpenAI Azure Services stood up. Uh, the API key I'm gonna rotate as soon as this demonstration is done. But we can see on line 13, I have a text string called, my name is John. And I'm going to turn that into a vector using PowerShell so I take that string and then I send it to the OpenAI endpoint um, and there is a, a embedding a model behind that endpoint. That embedding model is then going to turn it into a very large list of floating point numbers that you see at the very bottom. So this is just a representation of what that looks like. So now I have a vector of the string, my, my name is John. Now I can use those floating point numbers to do com comparisons against other strings find out how similar they are. Uh, what, the beauty about this is in previous language models, you had to teach the model, you had to supply it information so that the model can learn what's going on and then give you appropriate responses based off questions that you That was all fine and dandy. With a RAG solution though, now we can generate vectors on existing data and then implement an open AI solution that's tied to it so that you don't necessarily have to teach your language model about your data. Your language model and the open AI will learn about your data as you go, provided that you have done the appropriate and the correct embeddings and vectors, uh, give it appropriate data. So here, this is the general uses pattern for like open AI and chat GTP. On the far left, we have a user they are going to submit a question to an app server or an orchestrator. Uh, and that, or app, that app server or orchestrator um, is then going to talk to an open AI endpoint. Um, 
And then the AI search can also query your data in real time about the question that was asked. Given that the data is accurately uh, rated with the embeddings and vectors, the OpenAI can then do similarity searches and re return an appropriate response based off whatever question the end user asked. The beauty about this is that we can easily connect OpenAI to your existing data set without too much of a hassle. Now, one of the things about OpenAI, um, and this is, this is this next slide is, an, is a better representation of using Azure SQL Database to facilitate this. Um, with Azure SQL Database, they actually, they, there's an early adopter program. Uh, they actually created a vector data type within Azure SQL Database. So we don't have to store that information as strings. We can actually store it as its own vector data type. So if you are a consumer using Azure SQL Database today, uh, you can get an early adopter program access to utilizing the vector data type to more easily attach your data to an OpenAI point in service. So in this case, we have an, on the left, we have a Azure SQL Database. We extract all the products that are similar. We generate those vectors and those embeddings. We stand up an open AI language model. Um, and then we tell the language model where the data lives using native language, like asking a question. Um, we can then use the open AI to generate an answer for that question and basically return it back to the user. If you are interested in the early adopted program, here's a bit.ly link that I created for you. Feel free to go out there, uh, fill out your information, and Microsoft will get back to you. Um, it is in preview, um, so, but you are welcome to submit that information. Real quick, I do have a demo of this in action. Uh, we need a couple things for this to work. One, we need an Azure SQL database. This is not available for Onbox product. Um, it's only available currently at in Azure SQL Database realm. We also need an Azure OpenAI resource. Uh, we, of course, we need data. So we need lots of data to make this work. Um, I'm using a Walmart data set that was given to us free from Microsoft. Uh, and then we need two models. We need a chat model, GPP-4. And then we need a embedding model uh, to make this demo work. Um, the QR code above me is a direct link to a GitHub repo by Davide, uh, who works for Microsoft, and he is uh, highly involved with getting this implemented Azure SQL Database. Uh, and so I pretty much walked through his GitHub repo and reproduced this, so that we can see it in action, so you can see how it works. So, um, so let's jump into the demo real quick. So this is, uh, I'm in the uh, an, uh, GitHub repo. This is Davide's repo, Azure SQL DB chatbot. Um, here he has broken out all the steps very, very nicely. Individual T T SQL scripts that you can run, um, as well as further information. This image should look familiar for you. Um, but we can see this. So I basically just walked through these scripts for you, um, like I said, because it takes time to get it all stood up and created. But if we jump over real quick, uh, I do have a open AI Azure resource running. Um, it's currently located in the East US2 region. Um, I will say that when you stand this up, there are quota limits in open AI. Um, so if you're gonna do anything heavily, heavy, heavily queried, you may need to scale this up to make sure that you have enough compute to facilitate the requirements. So let's jump over. So this is Azure Data Studio. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see that I've got a server called Starship Enterprise. I do have a Walmart database. Uh, this is loaded with data, about 30,000 rows worth of data that came with the embeddings already created. Um, so Davide has taken care of that and actually generated the, the embeddings for us. However, if I needed to, I could use my embedding model on my OpenAI to create more embeddings if I, needed, if I wanted to change the way that the vectors are. In this case, I am connected to my database. I'm going to ask it a question. What are the best products for organizing a birthday party for a teenage boy? It is going to essentially take that text, generate it into a payload that I need, and then we're going to send a couple JSON objects to the OpenAI endpoint. Um, 
And it's going to come back in, th in three different forms, an answer, a products, and thoughts. And hopefully if this runs correctly, we're going to see a response for it. If I highlight all of this, click run. Oop, action died. I'm going to reconnect, rerun it. It'll reconnect. So right now it's thinking it's going to send all that information over to the open API. Sorry, open AI. Uh, and we get a response back, so we can see the response if we wanted to, but the important part is right down here at the bottom. We can see that we have an answer. We have a couple product suggestions from the OpenAI uh, response, and then some thoughts around that the model collected for us. So we actually can see this in real time. So this should showcase how you can tie your existing data in your Azure SQL database with some manipulation. You have to create a vector data type. You have to create the embeddings and the vectors for this to work. But you could tie in a chat bot with your own data and then provide that chat bot to your consumers so that they can ask questions of your data. So I think this is a really cool example as to where Microsoft is taking the AI product. Um, I think this is a really cool representation of how the AI is going to work. And we're going to see more of this, I think, coming forward from the Microsoft. So that was a really quick demo. Um, I've given you all the information. As you can tell, we can now uh, use AI to query our data uh, using Azure SQL Database. Here are quick some resources. Uh, I encourage you to try Azure SQL Database with OpenAI. Um, I think this is the wave of the future that Microsoft is helping to drive. So here are a couple of resources that you can use to go do some additional reading and checking up on uh, for you to look at the OpenAI product uh, in conjunction with Azure SQL Data. And with that, I'm John. Thank you very much for this quick video. Hope you enjoyed it. Go play around with the OpenAI and different models and see what you can do with your data. Thank